Welcome back to the Verizon Vikings training camp live. I'm your host, Gabe Henderson, joined by Vikings team reporter to help me break down practice today. As always, we got a loaded show every day, including today. We got three observations. We got position battles talking about the linebacker group. But before we get to that point, I would like to bring in the rookie safety from Michigan University, Josh Metellus. Josh, how's it going, man? It's going good. Appreciate you guys for having me. Likewise, man. But I, I, we got to start the show off. Of course, we're socially distancing right now, but you got to put your mask on when you're talking, man. <laughs> this one? <laughs> this yeah. one? Can you explain that? Uh, I just wanted to put a smile on somebody's face, you know, these challenging times. And as much smile as I can put on somebody's face under that mask, you know, that's a win for me. Nice, man. You did a good job. You got two people to smile. <laughs> but speaking of training camp right now, man. First training camp, and you get to learn from arguably the two best safeties in the NFL. Can you discuss what that process has been like for you? I mean, I couldn't ask for a better chance, you know, than this one right here because, you know, like you said, two of the best safeties in the NFL, I'm getting to learn from each each day, day in and day out, you know, and I get to be teammates with them. I get to see their grind. I get to see how they approach things. You know, I, got, I get to see how they act as a pro, you know, and they play the same position I play. So, you know, building off that for me, you know, it's just great to just have that, those role models in, in that position. Yeah, Josh, adding to that, you know, Harrison and Anthony have a lot of experience, but so mm -hmm. too do Dom Capers. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he's entering his, his 34th overall season in the NFL. How much are you learning from Dom? I mean, he's in his first season with the Vikings as a, as a senior uh, advisor, but how much are you leaning on his experience too in camp? Oh, Dom, Dom's amazing. Um, you know, from the first day, Coach, you know, made sure that we knew that Dom has been in the league for a long time, been around football for a long time. And, you know, and it's the little things with Dom, you know. Uh, you'll have a rep, he'll pull you to the side after that rep, you know, coach you up on some things. So it's just great having that, that, that person that has seen it all, you know, has been through it all, you know, being there for you and helping you uh, progress at the next level. And, and what areas do you feel like your game has grown the most since training camp started? Uh, I have to say uh, just the mental side of it, you know, being able to understand, uh, being able to understand what the league is like um, and the type of plays they're getting and, you know, the type of technique you have to use. I feel like that's the best part um, that I've been learning throughout this camp. And Josh, as you kind of begin your NFL career here, how much emphasis are you putting on special teams? I know you play that a little bit mm -hmm. at Michigan. Has uh, is, is that been a, a focal point for you so far? Yes, uh, I want to contribute to this team as much as possible. And right now, that's special teams. So whatever I have to do to get on that field on special teams, I'm going to do it. Nice, man. Well, I know it'll be fun to see, to, to face somebody other than your teammates mm -hmm. come here in a, a few weeks from now. But thank you again, Josh. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the smile also. You helped brighten the show today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think right now, Eric, you got to have that smile, being that it's the dog days of camp. First observation. We're at the literally the middle point of training camp, day 10 of day 19 of practices. And we've seen some guys step up and be consistent. For you, one, side, one guy on the offensive side of the ball that stood out to you. Yeah, you're right. We're, we're halfway through. So we're 10 days into practice. We have nine to go. But the guy, who, the guy who, who I like right now is B.C. Johnson. I feel like he's maybe flying under the radar a little bit. I, you know, he was a seventh round pick a season ago out of Colorado State. And not a lot of people knew about him. But through camp so far, he's been with the first team offense. He's been essentially the number two wide receiver. And a lot of people kind of penciled in Justin, Justin Jefferson as, as the number two wide receiver. But, but that's been BC so far. And he's flying under the radar. He makes plays, you know, every day when we watch him, he's making some sort of play. And, and he's looked good. You know I can't move on to observation number two without asking about the defensive side of the ball. Who's the guy on the defensive side of the ball that's, that stood out to you? It's a guy who covers B.C. Johnson sometimes, and that is cornerback Mike Hughes. And, you know, Mike is going to play a very important role this season. You know, he could be asked essentially to be the team's number one cornerback, and he's filled that role so far in camp. Holton Hill has also looked good. But it's a big season for Mike. He was a first-round pick a few years ago, but he's looked the part so far in camp as the number one corner. And if he can play that, that role, and the Vikings can count on him, at game in and game out, that, that's going to be very important for the defense. Moving, moving to observation number two, the tight end play today was stellar. We talk about, you know, all camp right now, moving to day 10, all camp they've been consistent. You got the 10-year vet, you got uh, Irv Smith who's coming into his second year, and then Mr. Reliable, I like to call him Tyler Conklin. What can all three of these guys do to add value, and what have they done in training camp that stood out? They can make plays, and all three of those guys made plays today. We saw Kyle Rudolph get behind the defense for a nice catch. 
You can see this catch right there from Irv in a yeah. team drill. And this play right here was probably the play of camp. I mean, it was play. the last play of yeah. camp. You know, Tyler Conklin goes up, extends, reaches, and he was actually mobbed by his teammates after that play. <laughs> we know how much the Vikings love their tight ends, especially Gary Kubiak, and we know those three players are going to be key contributors this season, and it was on display today. They all made plays, and as a result of that, the offense was humming. Moving on to observation number three, a guy that is, you know, a value piece of this puzzle for especially the defense, pinning the guys in the, you know, in the inside the 20 when the offense get the ball on the other side of the ball. But Britton Colquitt, what stood out to you about him today? What stood out was the fact that he actually punted, and it was the first time we had seen Britton punt in camp. We're Like Gabe said earlier, we're on day 10 of camp. This was the first time Britton has punted in full team drills, and he looked great. You know, he focused on punts inside the 50-yard line to kind of, like Gabe mentioned, pin the defense deep. So of those nine punts that he had, eight landed inside the 20-yard line, and that, that's obviously a great rate. He had two, I think, land around the five-yard line, and, you know, Mike Zimmer will love that for his defense. So it was a good day for Britton, and, you know, and he has actually steadied Dan Bailey as well. We, we've mentioned Dan a couple times on the show, but he made another field goal today. So Dan is now 13 of 13 in camp, and the Vikings special teams overall, the, the unit is, is in a good place right now. I think it's worth noting the energy that Britton brings. But speaking of energy moving to the position battles, the energy that this linebacker position group brings to this defense is second to none. We talk about Eric Kendricks, Anthony Barr, Eric Wilson. So you have three guys right there that could compete for the top three linebackers in the NFL. But for you, what about this linebacker group stands out to you? It starts with, with Barr and Kendricks, and, and they bring the energy, especially Kendricks. That guy, is, his, <laughs> his hair, his hair is, is almost on fire. Energizer bunny. He is. Um, but a guy that I like so far in camp is Troy Dye. Mm. And he kind of fits the mold of what the Vikings like at linebacker. At, he, he went to a Pac-12 school, so did Barr and Kendricks mm. and, and Cam Smith. But he's athletic, he's rangy. He led Oregon in tackles all four seasons he was there. He's kind of the prototype of what the NFL is looking for in a linebacker right now. You know, he can cover the pass really well. He can get in there against the run. He's probably going to contribute a lot on special teams early on, but, but that's, that's okay. And that's a role for him because, as you mentioned, the Vikings have three top-tier linebackers and, and Barr, Kendricks, and Wilson. But the, the, but the Vikings are certainly high on, on Troy Dye's potential. Speaking of that potential, you talk, we talked about four linebackers. After those four, you have three undrafted guys in that linebacker position group that are vying for playing time. So speaking of those three guys, who, who should Vikings fans know more about, speaking of, you know, your Jordan Ferris, Blake Lynch, and guys like that? Yeah, the third guy is Hardy Nickerson. Yep. His dad played in the NFL, if it's a familiar name for, for fans. All three of those guys, as Dave mentioned, are undrafted. And so they're going to have to fight to make the roster, probably through special teams. But they have, the per they have the perfect person to look at in that mold in Eric Wilson. He mm -hmm. was uh, undrafted in yeah. 2017 out of Cincinnati, has turned into a special teams ace the last few seasons. Is, as we said before on the show, probably a special teams captain. Mm -hmm. And all three of those guys can look to his lead with how he does on special teams and on defense for how they can carve out a role in the NFL. One of those three guys is probably going to earn the final linebacker spot. It, it remains to be seen with what happens with Ben Gedeon. He's currently not practicing. He's on the pup list. But those three guys are, as you mentioned, they're all undrafted. They're all trying to work their way onto the, onto the roster. But they all have potential. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what the Vikings like to see. Well, they get a day off. Off day tomorrow, practice Thursday, and then practice Friday at U.S. Bank Stadium. So that'll be a, a practice to watch. It'll be like the first game mock-up. So Vikings fans, make sure you stay tuned to that. Make sure you stay tuned to Vikings.com and following us on all of our social media platforms for the most up-to-date coverage on the team. Like yesterday, we leave you guys with a play to get you guys more excited about the September 13th matchup against the Green Bay Packers. Let's check it out.